When it comes to building websites, building out the blog post template is actually one of my favorite things to create. But you can also make some pretty big mistakes if you're not careful. In this video, I'm going to share with you five of my best practices for designing blog post templates that are not only visually appealing, but help keep the users engaged. We're going to take a look at some real life examples of both the good and the bad, and then we're going to create our own blog post template using Generate Press and Generate Blocks all from scratch. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's get started. Do you offer WordPress website maintenance plans for your clients? Join the nearly 4,000 agencies and freelancers who have unlocked the secret to quickly growing their recurring revenue with the Website Owner's Manual. Learn how the WOM works at theadminbar.com forward slash WOM and save 30% at checkout with the code YouTube. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is having a container width that's just too wide for your blog post content. A wide container at 1200 pixels, let's say like you might have for your entire site, is just too wide for long form content. If we take a look at this site, you can see how the blog post content spans all the way from one side of the site to the other. While it might not be obvious right away that this is a problem, I guarantee if you spend a few minutes trying to read this, it becomes very difficult. To show you just how much easier it is to read when you have a smaller container, in this other tab, I've used the inspector to reduce the width significantly. Now with the width set to half of the original width, it makes it a whole lot easier for your eyes to track one line to the next. Popular blog sites like Ghost, Medium, or even the New York Times realize just how important this is and use a very small container width for their long form content. A good rule of thumb is to stick between 60 and 70 CH units wide. Now, if you're not familiar with CH units, they're actually a relative unit of measurement in CSS that scales proportionally with the size of your text. This ensures that you keep a good maximum width for all of your long form content, and we'll definitely put this to use later when we start building out our blog post. With the rise of AI generated content, trust is gonna be even more of a factor going into the future. If you wanna build a loyal audience and avoid some of the penalties that Google and other search engines might impose on AI generated content, that is important to feature your authors. Reputable news organizations do a really great job of this by featuring the author information high up in the article. This gives the reader an immediate connection between the content they're reading and the human behind it. You can also link the author's name to a bio page or to their author archives so people can dive in and learn more about the author. And this is even important if you just have one author on your website. You have to remember that some people might be coming into your website through your blog and they might not realize that this is a one man show and they're still gonna wanna know exactly who's behind this content. Here are two articles side by side. One features the author while the other does not. It may be completely subconscious, but the article with the author seems more authoritative immediately. People don't read the internet like they would a book from start to finish. We're often in a hurry, we have a short attention span, and we're quickly trying to skim information to find exactly what we're looking for. If we don't find that answer in the first few seconds, we're quick to hit the back button in search of another article that might make the answer more obvious. This is why article summaries like a too long didn't read section or a table of contents is so important to the skimmability of your content. With a quick summary of what the reader can expect to learn from your article, featured predominantly at the top of the article, they'll know right away if they're in the right place or not. A table of contents will give them the opportunity to skim all the headlines and click exactly to the information they're looking for. Both of these options make your content more engaging and keep the reader around for longer. Later, when we get to actually building our blog post template, I'm gonna show you both how you can create a summary using some custom fields or an excerpt and how you could automatically bring in a table of contents. Chances are when somebody lands on your article, what you're answering is only a piece of the puzzle for them. Hopefully your article does a great job of answering that question, but what if they have more questions? And what if you have more content on your website that could answer those questions for them? Well, you don't want them going somewhere else. Featuring related posts on your website is a great way to keep your readers engaged, it reduces your bounce rate, and it makes your website a more valuable resource. But there is a delicate balance you have to strike. Too many distractions and you risk making it too difficult to read your content because the users are so distracted by other things going on. So really, I see two solutions to this. One is making sure you make good use of internal linking within the body copy of your post. This can highlight certain parts of your post where you might have more relevant content for the user to discover. This also does a great job of bringing in related posts without distractions like images or graphics or cards. The other, of course, is by having related posts down at the bottom of your article. A lot of times you'll see these in different kind of card layouts. Ideally, you have content that's closely related and would keep the user on your website for even longer. 
Of all these best practices, this is the hardest one to get right. Given only two options, give me great content over great design any day. But there's nothing saying we have to choose. A plain text-only blog post can get really boring and repetitive, especially if it's over a thousand words. Sprinkling in images, graphics, callouts, block quotes, or other visual elements really helps break up the repetitiveness of the text and makes your blog posts a lot more enjoyable to read. Of course, this is really easy to take to the extreme and end up with a blog post that's so overly designed you completely take away from the content. Now you're probably thinking that this sounds a lot more like the content that goes in the blog post and not the template itself. And you're right, but I think you're also wrong. Considering all these things that are gonna be inside your blog post, right now is when you wanna be thinking about that design system and how all of those elements are gonna work inside the template you're creating. This way you can create block patterns or global styles that are gonna match perfectly with your design template. And when you go to create this content, you'll already have pre-configured, pre-designed elements to work with. When you're designing your template, it's important to think about all the content that will live inside of it and design those elements that you're gonna be using time and time again. All right, I think that's enough talking about it, so let's go ahead and dive in and start getting our hands dirty creating this blog post using all these principles we already talked about. All right, to speed this process up a little bit, I did go ahead and do some work here inside of Figma, mocking up kind of what I wanted to do with this blog post template. It will at least give us a starting place. I don't plan on copying and pasting every single style and making it exactly like this, but it just gives us somewhere to start with a bit of a design. So just to give you a quick overview on it, of course, we have this hero section here that has the categories at the top. It has the H1, the author information, which of course is one of our best practices there. It's got the featured image. Now here in the content section, you can see it's pretty narrow, which is another one of the best practices we're gonna try to achieve here. It's got the summary inside of this article. So uh, that was another one of our best practices. We have more author information at the bottom and we have links to other content, which is also something we went over. Now, the only thing that I didn't mock up in here is some of the stuff we'll do to actually stylize some of the content. We'll just kind of do that on the fly inside of Generate Blocks when we get to that point. So with this kind of as our starting point in mind, let's go ahead and jump in here into Generate Blocks. Now, in a lot of my videos, I do a lot of heavy editing to pull out kind of the boring bits or the things that might not be so applicable but I do get comments every once in a while where people will ask questions about things that I actually cut out of the video. So in this video, while it might make it a little bit longer, I'm gonna go step by step and try to do as little editing as possible, just so you can see every step that you need to take to go through this. So what we're gonna do here is go to the element screen. You can just click on that at the top and we're gonna add a new element. Now we're gonna choose the type as block and go ahead and hit create. We'll give this a name, we'll just say blog post template, and I'm gonna call this demo just so I make sure I know which one it is in here. For the element type, we're gonna choose content template, and for the editor width, we can go ahead and change this to 100%. And down here in the location for the display rules, we're gonna change this to post, all post. So with all those things in there, we're set up and ready to go. I do have some demo blog post already loaded into the site, so we'll be able to see this as we go. So first things first, let's drop in a container here. And this is gonna be our hero section at the top. So we need to get that kind of light blue background. I realize that might not be coming across on the screen recording. It is a very, very light shade of blue, but it's just to differentiate between the hero section here and the content. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. Now, of course, we're gonna need an inner container in here. So I'm gonna drop that in. Now this site is actually defaulting to a max width of 1284, which is set inside of the customizer, but I actually wanna go with something a little bit more narrow. Since this blog post template is all really kind of center aligned, going all the way out to that 1284 is, is too much of a dramatic jump between the things that are wide and the things that are narrow. So what I'm actually gonna do is unchain that from the global value and I'm gonna do 1024, and that's gonna make it just a little bit more narrow. We'll go ahead and pop open the list view here so we can see what we're working with. And on this inner container, I wanna go ahead and give that some padding. So I'm gonna do 80 pixels at the top, and we'll do 24 on the left and right, just to keep it away from the edge on smaller screens. Now in here, we have a few different elements. We have these buttons here for our categories. We have our H1, we have our author information and the date. 
and then the featured image. So we need to get all those things set up. So we'll just start from the top and work our way down. We'll start with a button. This is gonna be the buttons for our categories. Now, one thing that I typically do when I'm designing blog posts uh, templates like this inside of Generate Blocks is I don't actually connect all the dynamic data right away. And the reason for that is when you connect the dynamic data, it doesn't preview any post. So you're left with some kind of like empty fields or to just say metadata, or it'll have no image where there's a featured image. So a lot of times what I'll do is just put notes in there or reminders to let me know what to connect or just lorem ipsum in there so I have something in there for the time being. Once I'm happy with the layout and everything's good, then it's a quick job to come back in there and actually connect all the dynamic data. So that's what we'll do here is we'll just put category here inside this button so I know I'm gonna link this to my category. Now these are obviously much smaller, so we'll go in here and adjust this padding. Like I said, I'm not gonna make a big deal of trying to get this exactly how it was in my Figma drawing, but we'll get a good sense of it. We're gonna bump this down to maybe 14 pixels tall. We'll change the transform to uppercase and give ourselves just a little bit of letter spacing. We're gonna change the text color to this blue link color I have here. And on hover, we're gonna make it white. For the background, we'll use that same blue color, but we'll actually drop the opacity down to maybe 0.1, just to make it really light in the background. And then the background can be that full blue color on hover. So we have something like this. I also wanna go in here and add just a bit of border radius, maybe something like three pixels all the way around just to softly kind of round those edges. Now we do want this in the center, so we can grab this inner container here and we can go ahead and center align everything. So that should get our little category button there. And if we have multiple categories, it will just make multiple of those buttons once we get all the dynamic data set up. All right, next we need to add a headline for our H1. So we'll go ahead and change this to an H1. I'm just gonna grab this text so we have some kind of text in there. Obviously we need a little spacing in here between this and the category. So we might do something like 24 pixels should probably do it. And I've already set up some of the typography, just kind of a starting point inside the customizer. Uh, so this is coming in at something I'm fairly happy with. Now under that, we're gonna have all of this author information and the date. And to be able to lay this out, I actually wanna put this inside of a container. So I'm gonna go in and add another container here, and we're actually gonna set this to display flex. Now inside this container here, I'm gonna have one container that's gonna go on the left-hand side that's gonna hold this image and name together, and then I'll have this text next to it. So we'll drop in that container here, we'll add a block after it, and this is just going to, oh, I did it before, so we'll just rearrange it here, maybe. Use the arrows. And we'll change this to a headline block inside of generate blocks, change it to a paragraph tag. This is actually going to be the published date. Again, we'll connect that dynamic data when we get to that. So inside this container, we just wanna make sure that we are justifying this content to the center. So it moves to the center of our page. And inside this container, we need to add an image for our author image. I'll just grab one out of the media library for now. And next to it, we wanna add the name. So I'll insert this after. We'll do another headline block and we'll change this to a paragraph. Now we can just put author name and we'll connect that here in a bit. Now these need to be next to each other. So again, we can use Flexbox. We'll just go to the container that holds both of these, change it to Flex. That will put those next to each other. We can align those in the center so they're center aligned in there. And then we probably wanna give it just a little bit of gap. So we might say something like eight pixels just to move the image a little bit away from the name. Now, obviously we still got some alignment issues here. So we can go to that container that's holding all this information. We can align those items center and we can give those a bigger gap, maybe something like 48 pixels. That might not even be enough, maybe 60 pixels. We'll click off of there. And I think that looks pretty good for the space between. We just want to put a little bit more space in between the title here and the author information. So on the headline will be easy enough. So maybe we do something like 60 pixels just to bring it fairly far down. Just with proximity, I think this kind of links together the category and the title, and then a little bit of space in between the author name and publish date, and these are kind of grouped together. So that all looks pretty good there. And the next thing we need is our featured image. So to do that, I'm actually gonna go on this outside container, and I'm gonna add a container inside of it here. And this is actually gonna be, uh, I'm gonna use the background image feature here to bring in my uh, featured image. 
So with that, we'll want to reduce the max width here as well. So I'm gonna change this to 1024 to match what's above it. Now, it doesn't have margin auto on it by default because I didn't use an inner container. So we are gonna have to find the new spacing controls here. And on the margin right and on the margin left, we're gonna have to do auto. And that will make sure we have even space between the left and right. I know you can't see that right now, but we'll drop a background image in so you can. So I'll just grab any old image from the library here. Now you can see if I took away those auto margins, that would move it all the way to one side. But as soon as I put those in, it will move it right in the center. All right, so this has a bit of border radius on it, and it also needs to take up more height. So to do this, I'm gonna use the sizing controls again, and I'm gonna do a height on here of, let's say 500 pixels, just to start us out. In fact, I might grab and see what I did here in this drawing. It's only 378 in the drawing, but when I look at it in the drawing, it does look kind of skinny. So I think we'll just start with 500 pixels and that will be fine. So if we close this down now and take a look at everything, it's all looking pretty good. We do have too much space here in between this information and the featured image. I think the featured image needs to be a little bit closer. And that space is actually coming from this first inner container where I put 80 pixels of padding on it. So I'm gonna drop this down to maybe something like 40, maybe even less than that. So, no, that looks pretty good. So I think spacing wise, this looks pretty decent. So the last thing we need to tackle is we don't want this blue background going all the way to the bottom of our image. I'm gonna go ahead just for a moment and change this to a darker color just so you can see it better in the screencast. And to do this, I'm gonna grab this container we're using for the featured image and I'm gonna give it some negative bottom margin, maybe like 80 pixels to bring that up a little bit. So now when we add a new container underneath this one, insert after, we change this to a container. We'll go ahead and give it a white background and we'll match that negative margin with some top padding here just to even those out. You can see the image is actually now going behind. We can fix that with Z index. So I'll grab that container with the image again. And we'll go up here to the layout and make sure that the Z index is set to a higher value. So now you can see these are kind of overlapping, which is exactly what we want. So we'll go back and change this again to our blue color instead of the start color. Now that you can see what's going on and we can start working on our content section. So the first thing we have here is this summary section, which obviously is one of the principles we talked about. So we wanna get this all set up. Now we want this to all be kind of contained. So I think we'll do a container with all this content inside of it. So inside here, we'll drop in a container. Actually, we could probably go with an inner container since we're gonna want all that margin auto and everything anyway. So we'll drop the inner container in there. And for this one, we're actually gonna do a completely different max width. So this is where, it's gonna go back to where we were talking about CH units. So what I'm gonna start off with here is 60 CH. And if you just type that in there, it will automatically change this value here in the dropdown. So you can see now, in fact, I'll give it a background color so you can see it. You can see this container's gotten really narrow and it's basing this width off of the font size for this container. So for instance, if I change this to four, it would get super narrow, but if I change it to 40, it would get really wide. I know I'm gonna want my font size somewhere around 20 pixels. I'm just gonna put in that pixel value for now. And we can see that our container width is nice and narrow. All right, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that background. And we need to give ourselves just a little bit of padding in here. We'll go with maybe 40 on the top, 40 on the bottom and left and right of 24. All right, inside of this container, we wanna add a container for that summary section. And in it, let's go ahead and drop the blocks we're gonna need. So I know we're gonna need a paragraph block that says uh, in this article, dot, dot, dot. We're also gonna need a headline block that's actually gonna have our summary in it. For now, I can just drop some website Ipsum in there. And then we kinda of have a border at the bottom. So we're gonna to have to decide on how we wanna do this. We'll go ahead and style this headline in the meantime. Change that to uppercase, maybe 14 pixels tall. Give it a little bit of letter spacing. And this text here, I think is a little bit bigger than the rest of the text. So you can see here, I've actually done 24 and here it's 20. So I'm gonna go into this text and change this to 24. 
Uh, obviously better to do all of this in RIM, but we don't have those controls inside of Generate Blocks quite yet. So, all right, so now we need to figure out how we're gonna do these little borders. This one at the bottom is pretty simple. I could just add a border to this container and it would take care of that, but this one gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, we could go write some CSS to make this happen, but I think we can do all of this inside the Generate Blocks controls with the Flex controls. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. So to do that, I'm gonna add a container here and I'm actually gonna take this in the article text and I'm gonna drop it inside that container. Now, also inside of this container, I'm gonna add a, another container and we're gonna use this container for our little divider line. So what we can do here is just give it a background color. I'll go ahead and give it something dark now just so you can see it. And we'll set a height and we'll say maybe one pixel tall. So now you can see we just have this border here. Now what I can do is go to this container that's holding the in the article and that border and we'll change the display to flex and that will put those two next to each other. Now this container here where the line is, I want that to grow. So I'm gonna change the flex child, the grow to one, and that should make it the full width here. It should span everything we need. Now we just need to center align these. So we'll go to align items and choose center. And it looks like this has some bottom margin on it maybe. Yep, there we go. So once we change that to zero, those are nice and centered. And we probably do want a little bit of gap between them so we can use the column gap maybe say something like 16 pixels, and we can grab that container and change it to the appropriate color, which was just this light blue. Now we need to match that with another one at the bottom. So I think what I'll do is just duplicate this container and we can just drag it out here underneath that headline. So now if we click off of this, we can see we have this underline here and this underline here. We just need to give this a little bit of margin, maybe 16 pixels there, and the bottom 16 pixels to even it out. Now this is kind of hard to tell because we have some of the UI in the way with these little uh, icons for the container, but I think this will work. And once we start checking everything on the front end, we can be sure of that. All right, so that takes care of our little summary. And what we need next is simply just the post content. So this is pretty easy. I'm gonna go to our inner container here and we'll add a block. And this is gonna be the dynamic content block from Generate Blocks or Generate Press. Uh, and we're gonna do post content. So this will bring whatever content in from the post. Obviously it's a little crammed right now. So I can go to our summary container and we can give this just a little bit of bottom margin. Let's say something like 32 pixels, that might do it. All right, so that puts all of our post content in there. And the last thing we need to do inside of this section is just set up this author bio information. So to do that, we'll just go in here underneath this dynamic content, add us another container. We want to give this some top margin. We'll say maybe 60 pixels. We want to give this some padding. We'll do maybe 32. We'll give it just a little bit of border radius. And I know it has a border on it. All right, so for the background color, we're gonna go with that light blue again. So we're gonna go with a slightly darker border here. And that should take care of that styling. And we need to look at how we're gonna set this up. So, you know, so much of this is just boxes in boxes in boxes. So we kind of have, I'm gonna draw these boxes out here. We'll, uh, we'll just do a stroke here so we can visualize it. We're gonna have a container there, and then we're gonna have a container here and we're also going to need a container here so that we can separate these two things because this will basically be something like this. So that's essentially the layout we're after in this. So let's go in here and get that started. What we'll do is drop in, I think we'll just drop in two containers. So I'll do one and duplicate it. We can go back to this section and change it to flex. So we put those next to each other. For this first one, we're gonna to have to figure out what size this image is. So it's about 80 pixels. So we'll just go down here to the size and we'll say we want that 80. And then for this second column here, we'll just set this to grow so it takes up the rest of the space. So we'll change that grow to one and now that's gonna fill up the rest of the space. Inside here, we need our image. So again, I'll connect this to dynamic data in a bit, but we'll just grab an image 
and then we got to tackle this one. So remember, we're going to have the name and next to it some social icons, and then we're going to have some author information underneath that. So let's go ahead and drop in a container here. This is going to hold our name and social icons. And then underneath that, we can probably just add text. So we'll do a headline, change this to paragraph. Again, I'll just do some website Ipsum for now. We can see this actually took over some of this space here. So we might need to go to this container that holds the image. And instead of doing 80 pixels of width, we might want to do a min width of 80 pixels. So that will make sure that it doesn't go below that. All right, so inside this container, we're going to add a headline for the author name. And we're going to have to add some buttons for the social share buttons. Of course, these need to go next to each other. So to do that, we grab that container and we change the display to flex and that will put those next to each other. We can do the justify content space between and we can see that will push the name to one side and the buttons all the way to the other. So for these buttons, let's go ahead and get these styled. I know we're going to want social icons, so we could do Twitter for this first one. We'll remove the text and we'll give it much smaller padding. Maybe something like four pixels should do all the way around. We can see it's actually stretching here and that's because of our flex on this. So what I'm going to do is make sure that that is not, I'm going to make sure that this is set to baseline or center so that way it's not taking up all the extra space. In fact, center would probably do us good if we just got rid of this uh, bottom margin on the author name. Obviously these are crammed, so I'll just go ahead and add a little bit back to this here. All right, so for this button, let's see what we did on the styling. It's just a darker blue color. So we already have that inside of our colors. We'll change the background. It's gonna be clear. The text is gonna be this darker blue and we'll just go lighter blue on hover. So that should work. We'll grab this button and we'll duplicate it and duplicate it again. Now, since we're using the space between, it's actually spaced those out in a way that I was not intending. So I'm gonna back up here, delete a couple of these. And instead of just adding buttons, I'm actually gonna wrap this in a button container. So now this actually has a button container around it with the button inside of it. And if I duplicate this button now, they'll be all next to each other like what we want it. So the first one is the Twitter icon. The next one we could do LinkedIn. And the next one we can do Facebook. And if we go back to this button container here, we can scroll up to our display settings. And we wanna give them just a little bit of gap, maybe eight pixels, we'll space those out a bit. Uh, this author name and photo is a little bit tight here. So we'll go back to this container and give that a little bit of gap as well. So I think something like that looks pretty decent. We want the author name to stand out a little bit more than the bio text. So I'm gonna to go to this biography text and we're gonna change this to maybe something like 16 pixels. And we might even go ahead and bold this name. And eventually this is gonna be linked as well. So just for the time being, we'll go ahead and give it a link just so we can see that. I think all of that is looking pretty good. Now we have a good chunk of this already done. I think all we have left is the related posts, which we'll get to here in just a second. But let's go ahead and save this and take a look at some of the blog posts we already have in here. And that'll give us a good idea on how things are turning out. So I'm gonna go back into the back end. We'll go to post, all post, and we'll do view. So here we can see our category, we can see the headline. Obviously none of this is dynamic yet, um, but we can see it all on the front end. Now looking at the summary, I do feel like it's maybe a little bit too close to this featured image and too close to the body copy. But for the most part, I think this is looking pretty decent. So let's go ahead and make those changes. We'll grab this container that's holding all that. And let's see, we had 32 pixels of bottom margin. Oh, I think it's this one here that's controlling that padding. So on the top, instead of 40, maybe we go 60. And then here, instead of the 32, maybe we go 48. Go ahead and update that. Refresh on the front end. And yeah, I think that does look a little bit better. So this stands out. People could read whatever this excerpt is to kind of give them an idea of what's in this article. 
So all that is good. We will go, we'll go ahead and move on to the related posts now, and we'll be close to connecting all this dynamic data and working on the responsive views. So in here, we'll add another container after. Do container. We'll also go ahead and give it an inner container, and we're going to change this max width to 1024. All right, so inside here, let's give this a little bit of padding, maybe 80 top and bottom, 24 left and right, just a good default for me. And the first thing we're going to do is drop in an H2, and this is going to say, let's see, you might also enjoy. You might also enjoy, dot, dot, dot. And here, we're actually going to drop in a query loop. So we'll drop in the query loop block, and a lot of times I will start blank, but I think for this, all we really have is a featured image and some text. So yeah, we'll go ahead and start blank. That makes it easy. So in this uh, post template, we want to change this to 33% width since we have three columns here. And inside of that, we can go ahead and drop in an image and we'll go to our media library. We're just going to grab an image for now and we can go back and fiddle with that in a bit. All right, so we want to reduce this height a little bit. That's a little bit too tall. Maybe we go with like 180. And since now it's kind of squishing the image, we can change this object fit to cover. Now I do just want to show three posts. So if we go back to the query loop, we could change this to three posts per page. And that will just show us those three. We need some gap in between them. So we'll go to the grid and add a little bit of gap. These images need rounded corners. So we'll add maybe eight pixels of border radius. And then underneath these, we'll add another block after, and we'll do a headline. And this is gonna be an H3. Center align that, which I believe it was. And we'll just grab this dummy text for now. I think that's looking pretty good. These, these are a little bit bigger than I have them in my design. And like I said, that's just coming from what I have in the customizer. This isn't a fully built site. This is really just for a demo. So I'm just gonna override this locally. And I think that will work. Need some space in between here. So we'll go to the margin and we'll add maybe 16 pixels of bottom margin to that image. And I think that will really do it for this section. Uh, obviously this is gonna be linked as well. So we can just throw a link in there now so we can see it. And I think that will do it for all the related posts. Now, just to show you here inside the query loop block, you can add parameters to this. So right now it's, once we connect all this dynamic data, it's just gonna show, it's gonna show all the other posts in here. But really what we're gonna wanna do is show related posts. So if this was a bigger website with dozens or hundreds of articles, we might wanna just show content that's in the same category or tag. We wanna try to anticipate whoever's reading this article, what other content are they gonna to wanna to consume? So a lot of times that's gonna be content in the same category or tag, or it might be even from the same author. And you do have all those controls in here. So we could go in here and we could choose taxonomy and we could say, okay, we only want the category of the current post item. So if we did this taxonomy categories, current posts, it's only going to show posts in that same category, which is a, a pretty good place to start on that. All right, with that done, we will go ahead and save this page and then take a look on the front end. And I think we can start connecting some of our dynamic content. Saving the page, refresh on the front end, and we have our category tag, our headline, our author name, published date, featured image, our summary, our text content in here, or all our blog content, the author bio information, and then our related posts. So that is looking great. So let's go ahead and start connecting all this dynamic data. So here for the category, we'll scroll down here to the bottom, we'll enable dynamic data, and for the content source, we're going to want to do list of terms. Now, unfortunately, when you're doing this inside of a content template, this taxonomy dropdown is not working. Hopefully this is something they'll have fixed in the final version. I am working off alpha versions right now. Uh, so we can't see that, but I know from testing this in the past, this will show the category here. Now, if you were wanting to change that to tag or something, you could actually toggle off that dynamic data and you could use these settings in here. So we could do list of terms and we could choose category, post tag, or post format. These settings here inside this toolbar, if you're confused as to why there's kind of doubled up, I think these eventually will go away. I think these are more connected to the generate press side of things. So I tend to use the ones over in the sidebar. 
which is what we'll do now. I'll go ahead and turn this off. We'll turn that dynamic data back on and make sure this is set to list of terms. Like I said, it's not gonna show the category in here, but I know that it will be the category. And then we can link this to the term archives. For this H1, we'll turn on the dynamic data and change the source to title. Like I said, now we're not previewing any of the posts, so we just see the, the title of this post, which is sometimes hard to work with. For this image, we can go ahead and enable dynamic data again, and this is gonna be the author avatar. Like I said, it kind of goes away here. And I do apologize about this updating failed. I'm on InstaWP, and for some reason, it, it continues to do this to me. Uh, for the author name, we can change this, turn on the dynamic data. For the content source, we will go with name. And for the link source, we can scroll down here and go to author archive. So this will link out to that author archive. For the publish date, again, enable dynamic data and we're gonna do post date. So that is today's date. All right, here we go for the featured image. Scroll down, enable dynamic data, featured image. Again, this disappears in the preview, so that's why I like to just use placeholders for the time being. Now, in this article and these little lines, all that's gonna be static information, but this we're actually gonna use the post excerpt for. So I'm gonna enable that dynamic data and change this to post excerpt, and that's gonna show the excerpt in this area. Now here, this is already dynamic. We're using that dynamic content block, but for our author information, again, we'll just want to go ahead and enable this and turn this for our author avatar. It does automatically change the size here, which I know we had at 80 by 80, so we have to fix that. Anytime you connect that, to the author avatar, it automatically changes it to 50 pixels. I'm not sure why that is. All right, for the author name, we'll enable that dynamic data. We'll change this to name, and we'll make sure it's linked to the author archives. And then these links here and this bio information, we're actually gonna have to set up some custom fields for. So we'll do that here in a minute, uh, but for now we'll just leave that be. All right, so in the related post, we'll again turn on dynamic data and change this to featured image. So now we should see some of these other images load in. It did change the size of this again, so I can't remember, I think I had this at 180 and make sure that's object fit cover so they're all the same size. For the post title, we'll enable the dynamic data and change it to title, and that should bring all the titles in and we just wanna make sure we're linking this to the single post. So now if we update this and refresh on the front end, we should be seeing the content from this post. So this is our category for this post. Here's the H1, the title of the post. Our author information, we can see it actually got rid of our rounded corners, so we're gonna to have to go back and fix that. We have our featured image pulled in. This is pulling in our excerpt, all of our copy for the body, our author information, again, it got rid of those rounded corners and it's showing our related posts. So uh, this post category is under marketing. And if we click this one, we'll see it's also under marketing. And this one has two categories and they're actually butted right up next to each other. So we do need to fix that. Now, another thing you might notice is we're seeing the same posts we're on down here in the related posts, so we need to take care of that as well. So we have a few issues here. One, are these categories touching? We have this uh, rounded corners we need to add to the image here, as well as the image down here. And then we need to exclude the current post. So let's go ahead and take care of those real quick. So for this button, what we'll do is we'll just give it a little bit of left and right margin. So that way, no matter what, it's gonna have just a little bit of space on either side. For the author image, we can go in here to the border radius and I'm just gonna give it a giant number so it'll be round. Same thing for this one down here. And for the query loop, we need to exclude the current post. So for that, we need to go ahead and add another parameter. And here we need to choose exclude posts. And then here we can exclude current posts, which is the first option. So we'll go ahead and save this again. And we can refresh our post here we should see now we only have one related post. We have our rounded image here, our rounded image here, and a little bit of space in between these two. So that is absolutely perfect. 
All right, so the next thing at hand is we need to go ahead and set up a system to bring in some kind of author bio and to link to the author's social profiles. So to do this, I usually use advanced custom fields and we can use the free version. I'm not sure if that's already installed on this install or not. It is not. So we'll go to plugins, add new, advanced custom fields. We'll go ahead and install that and activate it. Now we'll go to custom fields and we'll add a new field group here. We'll call this author information. And we're gonna have to add a couple fields here. So the first one is just gonna be a text field and this is gonna be author bio. So author underscore bio is gonna be that field name. So that is good. We'll go ahead and add the next one. Now these are gonna be URLs and these are gonna be the URLs to their social media profiles. So here we could say Twitter URL Add another one. Again, this is going to be URL. And we'll say LinkedIn URL. And one more for Facebook URL, Facebook URL. Now here under the settings, we're going to do this if the post type is equal to. We actually want to change this to if the user role is all. So this is a bit of a trick here. As long as we set user role to all, we'll be able to access all these fields for all of the users. So we can go ahead and hit save changes here. And if we go into users, all users, and we edit my user here, we should see all these fields down here that we can add. So of course we want some kind of bio here. And just to make sure we're seeing the dynamic data, I'm gonna say Kyle's dynamic bio, and then just drop some website Ipsum in there. For the Twitter URL, of course, we'd want to grab my actual Twitter URL, but for now, I'm just going to link directly to these sites just so we don't have to go hunt all that down. All right, so we'll go ahead and save those now that we have those fields added to this user. And we can go back into our elements, and this was our blog post demo. As you can see, I was already trying this earlier. And now we just need to connect these things. So uh, for the Twitter one, we'll just scroll down here to the dynamic data, we'll turn that on. And all we're wanting to do is connect dynamically to a link source. So in here, we'll just do author meta. And now we have to put in that meta field name. So I know that I did this Twitter underscore URL. We'll hit enter. Same thing for LinkedIn, we'll enable that. For the link source, we'll do author meta and we'll choose LinkedIn URL. And for Facebook, we'll do the same thing. All right, and then for the author bio section, we'll go ahead and enable the dynamic data. And for the content source, again, we're gonna do author meta, and this is going to be author underscore bio, which is what I called that field. So now we can go ahead and save these changes and now all that should be working dynamically on the front end as well. Now that's saved, we'll refresh. And we should see, yep, it's pulling in Kyle's dynamic bio. This, if we look down here in the bottom left corner, you can see that's linking to Twitter, that's linking to LinkedIn, and that's linking to Facebook. Of course, like I said, you're gonna wanna link those to your actual social media profiles. But that takes care of, I think, four of the different principles we talked about. So let's go over those. Obviously, we have the author information here high up inside the blog post. We have a summary inside of here. We have a very narrow width for our content to make it easy to read. And we're using some related posts down here to try to keep the user on this blog post even longer. The last thing we're going to want to tackle is giving some kind of styles to the content inside this post. Now, like I said earlier, this really has to do more with the content than it does the template, but I think right now is a good point to start thinking about the type of content that's going to be inside of these posts. So we know that a lot of posts are going to have things like block quotes or images. So those are two that I might come up to right away and say, okay, I want to develop some styles they're gonna work inside of all of my blog posts. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and tackle how we're gonna handle the block quotes and the images. Now, I think there's two really legitimate ways to do this, and I'm gonna explain why I tend to go one way over another. 
The first way would be to use Generate Blocks Global Styles. With these global styles, you could create global styles for things you would use as block quotes or for images. And all of that works perfectly and it's globally editable across your entire website. The problem I have with that is that whoever is creating the post, oftentimes an end client or somebody else on your team, is gonna have to remember to check the box for the global styles and then know which one to use. So for me, I tend to go the CSS route for these types of things. So I'm gonna show you some examples here for the image and block quotes, but you could apply this to all kinds of different elements. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back into our blog post template. I'm gonna click in here into our con inner container that has all of our blog post content, and I'm gonna scroll down to give this a class just to make sure we're only targeting things inside this blog post. So I'm gonna say blog content container. We'll go ahead and save this and we'll go back to the front end of one of these posts so we can take a look at what we're previewing and then jump in the customizer to write some CSS. So we'll view this post and we'll open up the customizer. We'll go into our additional CSS and I already have a bunch of junk in here so we're just creating a little extra space here. So the first thing I wanna do is do blog content hyphen container. That's gonna be the selector we use that we just added to all this post content. And this is one change that I do on almost every blog. So if you look at something like this H2 here, we have the default spacing beneath it, the margin coming from what's set in the typography settings and the theme. And that looks fine to me, but it also is pretty close to the paragraph above it. And I really like to separate these sections. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this blog content container. I'm gonna do a space and I'm gonna do is, open parentheses, and I'm gonna say h2, comma, h3, comma, h4. You could do this all the way through h5 and h6, but I'm typically just doing through h4 on my posts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do margin top, and I'm gonna do 1.5M. And you can see that added a little bit of extra space to the top of this headline. And I think that just helps separate some of these different sections of the blog post and makes it easier to read. So after that, let's take a look at the images. So here we see we have an image and an image caption. So again, I'm gonna do blog content container just to make sure I'm only affecting the images inside of this post template. And we'll do IMG. So underneath that, we're gonna write a few rules here. So let's think about some of the styles we've already incorporated into this layout and how we could use those again. So the first thing I notice is this featured images has a big border radius. So let's go ahead and add a border radius to all of the images within our post. So we'll do border hyphen radius, and let's do something like eight pixels. So we can see now that's kind of rounded those edges of the images. And I think that gives it a nice clean look. It's just a little bit more of polish on all of these things. Next, just to make it stand out some more and to give you some ideas of the things you could do, I'm not sure it goes so much with this site, but let's add a box shadow. So we can do box hyphen shadow. We'll do 10 pixels, 10 pixels, maybe 20 pixels of spread. And then we'll do a color here. I'm just gonna go all black and then we'll shade it down by saying maybe 20%. So now you can see there's a light shadow here. It might be hard to see on the demo, so I'm just gonna change this to 50 so you can really see it here. So now you can see there's just a little bit of a box shadow off the edge of our images, which just helps lift them off the page a little bit. Now, in this example, we have a really dark image, and of course your blog might have dark images too. So one thing I like to do for that is to add a border. We'll do something like four pixels solid white. And now we can really see the edge of this image and it helps define the box shadow a little bit. So this is kind of a little bit of a precaution and I like the way this looks on here. Now, of course, we didn't use a border on this. We could go back and add a border to this image to kind of match and maybe even a box shadow. But for now, I just wanna give you a few ideas. So with that, let's go ahead and style up this image caption. Obviously now with this border and the shadow, it's really crammed up in here. And really I want the captions to be smaller than the rest of the text because they're less important. So again, we'll do blog content container. And this one will do fig caption, which is the element for those image captions. So for this, maybe we'll start off with the font size and we'll do 0.8 rim. 
since we can write in rims now. And let's do some margin top, maybe eight pixels. That will just bring it a little bit off the edge of that image. Let's also go ahead and text align this center so it shows up in the center of the image. And we could even do something like font style italic. And that would help kind of separate this caption text from the rest of the text on the page. So if I just take all this out here, you can see it looks kind of boring. It just looks like the stock theme. But as soon as you put these few little tweaks in, everything just has that much more polish. Now, the next thing I want to tackle is block quotes, since they are commonly found inside of different blog posts. And I want to do something here to this block quote to make it more match what we have down here in this author bio. So give it some of the similar styles. In fact, we'll just stay down here with this one so we can see both of them at the same time. So we'll do blog content container, and here we'll do block quote. First off, let's give it a background color, and we'll do var accent three. Now we can do a little bit more padding. Maybe we do 32 pixels. We can do a border radius of eight pixels to match what we have inside of our image. And then maybe we just do a border one pixel solid and this was var accent two. So just with a few extra little tweaks here, we can see our block quotes go from something like this to something more like this. Like I said, if you do all of this with your blog post content up front, it just gives you more of a design system inside all of your blog posts that you know are gonna come in automatically no matter who's writing the post and it will make everything look a little bit more polished and more engaging for the reader. All right, we are hitting the home stretch now. All we need to do is go back through the entire template and check all the mobile responsive settings. In fact, we could just go ahead and take a look at now at some of the problems we might have. I'm gonna refresh this screen. And if we go here to tablet, we can see all of this looks pretty good. We know that because we set this as a CH width that we're fine on the width for this as well. And we can scroll down our post the author bio looks okay at this size. Now the related post down here at the bottom, we might wanna go with a two column grid rather than a three column grid. But for the most part, this looks pretty good on tablet. Now, if we go into mobile, we can see our hero section looks pretty good and all the text looks fine. Of course, we have some issues here with our author box and I'm just noticing all that CSS we wrote for the images actually affected this image inside here too because the way I have this section nested. So we're gonna have to go back and fix that as well. And then of course here on mobile, we're gonna want this to just be one column. So we've got a few things to do, but it shouldn't take much longer to have this cleaned up and we'll be ready to go. So we're gonna go back in here into the blog post template demo. And first thing, I think we just go straight into the mobile, the mobile view and we'll go down here to this author box. So because of Flexbox, I think we can fix all of this pretty easily. Instead of being at a flex direction of row, if we switch this to column, that will automatically stack these two things. Now I did go in here and add some row gap. I was testing this just before I started recording. But if we switch this to column and add that row gap, now we can stack the image and all the content below it. Of course, the author name and these links are really crammed as well. So if we go in here, pop open the list view, go to that container. We can switch that to column as well and add some row gap. So here we have eight pixels of gap in between those. And that should fix up this author box for all the mobile settings. As we saw, it looks absolutely fine on tablet. So I don't think we have any issues there. Now, if we go down here to these related posts, we can go to the post template and we'll change this to 100% on mobile. That will make sure that these stack nicely one column on mobile. And here on tablet, like I said, I think these are gonna look better if we went with 50%. Now, of course, when we go to 50%, these are gonna stack in two rows. So we wanna make sure we have that vertical gap in there as well. Now, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and take care of this issue that I caused with my CSS overriding this image. So if I would have thought this out a little bit better, I think we could have avoided this in the first place, but I think I have a decent solution for us to get out of this pickle without causing too many problems. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and duplicate this entire section that has all of our content in it. 
in the first copy of it here, I'm just going to delete out this author box. Now in the second copy of it here, I'm going to delete out the content and this whole container that has our summary. So now this one only has our author box. Now we put that class on this inner container. So I'm going to scroll down to the second copy here and get rid of this class. So now that CSS isn't going to affect this box. Now all we really have to do is clean up some of the padding and margin here. So we don't need all that vertical padding here. And in this container, we don't need all of this top padding. We might even be able to go into this container where it had all of our content and just double check. We have 40 pixels here. If we changed it to zero, that should put it back to where it was before. So essentially all I've done is put the author box here in its own container just to avoid having the same CSS affect it that I have affecting all the post content. Unfortunately, you can't just put that class here on the generate press dynamic content. We don't have the option to add a class to it. So this is a pretty easy workaround, although I probably would have rather done this a little bit more elegantly had I realized that problem in the first place. All right, so I think we can go ahead and get out of the customizer now and take a look at all of our work, do a little bit of review, and then we can get this demo over with. All right, so looking on the front end here, we want to just make sure that we're following all these principles. One was having the width of the container nice and narrow so we can read this text easily. We went with 60 CH units, which I think makes this really easy to read. The next, we wanted to make sure we had our author information high up on the post. So immediately above the fold when this post loads, you can see this was written by a human being, which is obviously pretty important. We included this quick summary of what people can expect to find. Of course, this is just using website Ipsum now, but you could go back and use the excerpt inside of WordPress to write your article summary there. Obviously, you can also use that inside cards and other kinds of things. So it's nice to have a summary of that article there anyways. Next, we included all of the related posts at the bottom. In this setup, we actually use the related post for the posts with the same category. And then lastly, we spent a little bit of time customizing these block quotes and these images just to make them a little bit more in line with the rest of the theme of the site. Of course, doing this with CSS means that no matter who adds images or block quotes to post in the future, all those things will happen automatically. Now this is a different type of video than I've really done before, obviously being more long form. And I've done more teaching in this as far as the principles of design that I use inside my builds. I'd like to know if you like this kind of content or not, or if you'd prefer I stick to shorter tutorials. I wouldn't mind mixing in some longer tutorials like this in the future. Now, if you'd like to see some more Generate Blocks content, you can click either one of these videos popping up here. And if you did get something out of this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button so you can catch me on the next video.